Welcome everybody to another Tips and Tricks. Today I've been working on a beat that uh, a local artist is going to use, so I figured I would go through some of the plugins that I use while I'm creating a track. Uh, there's a lot to go over here, but I'm going to focus on like five of them. Um, and I want to start with one that's really cool, really works well on subs, uh, dirties up a track. You can use it on vocals. It's a real creative plugin. So let's start off with Amp Designer. And let's take a look at it right here. Okay, so here's my session. This is the beat I was working on. I have everything converted to audio. Take a look at our 808 here. All right, I'm going to uh, open up Amp Designer. We can see this looks like your typical guitar bass amp setup. Have your level controls and everything. Um, I'll talk a little bit about those in a second. Let's solo the track. Okay, so we can take a listen here. I'm gonna move the plug in up. And we're gonna adjust some gain settings so you guys can hear the difference. Here's an 808 sub, or sub bass, whatever you wanna call it. You can see here's the gain control. This is what adds more grit or distortion. So I'm gonna turn that down and up. Okay, so you can hear what that did to the signal. Well, that was Amp Designer, and you can see how creative you can get with that plugin. Well, let's take a look at another one that I use a lot. This one is called Sub Bass, and it's a Logic Pro plugin. Uh, real easy to use. It does one thing, and it does it really well. It enhances subharmonic frequencies. So that's for your kick drums, your 808s, all your subwoofer stuff. So on this track, we're going to play around with this on one of the 808s I created here. So let's take a look at our sub bass, and uh, I have it set here for a sub enhancer. Okay, so let me open up the sub enhancer. This is a sub bass plugin that comes with Logic. Uh, my favorite setting is below the kick, but you can use any of the presets and adjust them. Um, it's real simple to use. I don't adjust a lot of the controls, to tell you the truth. Um, you have kind of like your typical ratio controls, uh, your bandwidth controls, uh, wet, dry mix. Um, but the sub enhancer, um, the kick, below the kick, those are all really nice to set your 808 away from your kick drum. And a lot of times they fight each other, and this will kind of help put the 808 in the frequency range it needs to be. As you can hear, I really thickened up the bass, I'll bring it up the mix so you guys can hear the full effect. Change this. So here's the sub enhancer. You can tell it just has a little bit of a different low frequency harmonic in it. Real easy plug-in, real straightforward, does what you want it to do. Well, that was uh, the sub enhancer that we were using. Uh, it's called Sub Bass. It's a real easy plug-in to use. I recommend checking it out. Comes with Logic 10 stock. Uh, you can hear the low end that that added to the 808s. Uh, it's a nice little secret weapon in your, in your production arsenal. The next thing I want to do is I want to make this track really big and epic sounding. So reverb is a way I can do that. Uh, I want it to sound like it's in a stadium or, you know, big amphitheater. Um, I'm going to use one of my favorite reverb plugins and it's called Space Designer. Uh, I've set this up in Logic. Um, I think I've used a plate. You can choose any setting you want. I'll go through how to pick some of the presets in here. And I've set this up on a bus and an AUX track so I can add it to any track I want through that bus. Um, so let's take a look at Space Designer and let's hear what it can do to a track. Okay, so I have all my brass tracks here. These are all the horns for the, for the song, all the different harmony parts. And I want them to, you know, sound live and sound bigger, sound like they're in a big stadium or something. I need to make this track uh, epic. So what we want to do is put, you know, big, big reverb on this. I'm going to choose a plate because plates tend to work really well. Um, used a lot in modern music production and throughout time. So let's adjust our wet dry mix. That's real important to do. So I have mainly the effect on its own auxiliary, and then I can add whatever level of the dry signal I want to it. I already have a little bit of this set, but I'm going to turn up the bus sander, my augs. As we play this, 
and you're going to hear the reverb come in, so just listen. Yeah, so you can tell that changed the whole tone of those horns. It made them a lot more realistic. It's going to make them sound, you know, more produced. And it's real simple. I just added a plate reverb to it. But Space Designer sounds great. It's a, uh, a modeling type of reverb. Um, they call them impulse responses, and they really work well. Okay, so that was Space Designer, and you heard how big and epic it made the track sound just by adding that real smooth reverb to some of the key sounds. Another neat plugin to use is a modulation effect, and it's called Ensemble. And this is another plugin, all these come with Logic 10. Uh, it's a great thickener. So I'm going to use this on one of my synth tracks. I have a, a kind of cool modulating synthesizer going on here. And just to make it thicker and kind of double it, I'm going to use uh, this ensemble and a preset called uh, Rich Modulation. And what this is going to do is kind of make it like I doubled the keyboards or thicken it up. And that's why it's called ensemble because it's kind of like a choir singing. So let's take a listen to what this can do and how it can really make this keyboard have its own life and character. Okay, so here's Ensemble. This is another one of those great plugins. I, I love the ones that just kind of do what they do. Real easy to work with. You know, get you creative and get your sound where you want it. Um, this one, you know, you can change all the different presets like any of the other ones. You can see I called up like Vintage Dimension, but let's use Rich Modulation. This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's really thick. It's, it's real subtle, but it's real nice on synth tracks. Here, I'm going to turn up the mix so you guys can hear it. See here how it's getting wider and just kind of gives it a different tone, thickens it up, almost doubles it. Okay, I'm going to back it back down. I like to blend it down a little bit. Obviously, I was exaggerating it so everybody could hear it, but it's kind of a nice setting. Okay, so you can hear what Ensemble did to that track. It was a really good sound and synthesizer, but just by adding that to it, I really thickened it up made it sound like it's a different sound, like it has its own character, made it a little more unique than just the stock sounding synth. The next thing we can take a look at here is another great plugin, and this is a, a stereo widener. It's called Stereo Spread. It comes with Logic 10, just like all the other plugins, and this will take your track and widen it out. Now, I don't recommend you know using it on an entire mix or something, but I have these horn parts and these string parts, and I want them to kind of jump out of the speakers and feel wider than what you know what we would normally hear. So this uh, stereo spread plugin, another real easy plugin to use, is just going to take a certain frequency range and make it really wide. That'll make my strings and my horns you know jump out and sound kind of bigger than they normally would be if I just used the stock setting. So let's take a look at this stereo spread. Real easy to use. I'm going to go through one of the settings here. Let's take a listen. Okay, so here's our stereo spread plug-in. Just insert it directly on the track. Let's set this to a medium-high frequency spread. Uh, our strings, I want to kind of affect some of the mid-frequencies in this string uh, pad I have here. This is really nice for these kind of sounds, you know, for kind of like your high mid-frequencies. Uh, it really doesn't cause as much phasing and, and issues you can get if you use it on low frequencies. So that's what's really nice about this. You can see I can adjust the exact frequency uh, range I want to use you know, my high frequencies and my low frequencies. Uh, right here, kind of adjust uh, the interval that it's uh, affecting, kind of like your lower and upper range. Um, it just deals with how the width is. What I really do is kind of just start with a preset and then I adjust my frequency range and usually that's uh, good enough. So take a listen, you can hear what this effect is doing. Let me change it to a high frequency. So this setting just affects more of the highs. And that's about it. It's a great, great plug-in. Well, you can see what that stereo spread did, that stereo enhancement that just brought those horns and strings right out of the left, right sides of the speakers and kind of left a lot of space for all my subs and my claps and everything like that to be real powerful in the center. Uh, it's a great plug-in. You saw it's real easy to use. Highly recommend it. 
along with all the other plugins we've gone over today. So you can see Logic 10 is really powerful. Uh, I do a lot of my production in, in that program um, and the plugins that come with it are really great and some of the ones I pointed out here aren't used a lot or people don't experiment with them because they're not your common EQ or compressor. Uh, I hope this helped you guys today and uh, hope you enjoyed everything I've gone over. Try all these plugins out. You know, try them in your sessions, try them when you're producing tracks. Play with your own variations on them. But they all come with Logic 10. I recommend them all and have fun and make great music. That's another tips and tricks. Thanks for tuning in.